MRI is a relatively new diagnostic modality used in horses. When we look at it in comparison to the human field, um, MRI is considered to be the gold standard for diagnosing injuries in the human athlete. And the whole goal with MRI is number one, to get a more accurate diagnosis, but number two, to be able to identify what the problem is and then more accurately treat it to improve the horse's long-term athletic soundness. When we compare MRI to radiographs and ultrasound, radiographs only look at the bone. So it has been estimated by radiologists that a 40% change in bone density is required before the human eye can detect any change on radiographs. And that's a pretty, pretty startling change. When we look at MRI in contrast, bone bruising where there's fluid increase in the bone or a crack in the bone, fluid will accumulate within the bone that will show up very readily on an MRI and not be present on radiographs. I think when horse owners are trying to decide when do I do an MRI, I think there's, there's a lot of different scenarios. One is maybe a, an acutely or sudden onset lameness that we can't find a clear answer and we need an answer soon because the horse is going to a competition. Um, other, another situation may be a, a case where the horse, we feel we have an accurate diagnosis, we treat the horse, it hasn't responded like we would expect them to. The real advantage of the standing MRI for us has been the fact that we can do a lot of our MRI imaging standing, it's much safer for the horse, the horse can come in, just be sedated, and it does sometimes take a little longer just for the horse to initially adjust to the room, but then once the horse is adjusted, they typically stand there quite well. We are typically generating between 600 and 1,000 images when we MRI a horse, and the typical MRI with the standing horse is between an hour and a half and two hours. In the United States, when we look at the standing MRI systems, there's either 13 or 15 throughout the United States. We have had ours here for five years. The closest standing MRI to us would be in Ohio. When, when we look at how the whole MRI process um, occurs, we have, I would say, three primary scenarios. We have horses that our clinic is working on that we find that MRI is the most appropriate diagnostic procedure and we move forward um, and, and do an MRI. We have referring vets that, that feel that the diagnostic tests that they have performed have not adequately given them an answer. The third scenario is we do have horse owners that feel that they have not um, received adequate information from their local veterinarians, that they're a little frustrated with where their horse is going, and they take it upon themselves to seek out um, further information for their horse. And I think any one of those scenarios is appropriate. What, what we end up doing then is we do the MRI here. I read the MRI, but then they're also sent out to an MRI specialist in Colorado who also reads our images. We then take that information and what I routinely do is then relay that to the referring veterinarian and the referring veterinarian does all of the follow-up care um, and communication with the clients. There are situations where the referring vet does say, you know, I'd really like you to do the stem cell therapy on this horse, or I'd really like you to do the follow-up treatment, and we're able to do that also. So what we really try to do is cater um, the MRI to the referring vet and the horse owner's wishes, but also the aftercare to their wishes and desires. And we feel that's really important to keep both the referring vet and the horse owner in the loop as far as how their horse is being treated because the referring vet is really going to be the one giving the long-term care.